<laughs> so, if your friend's parents have a higher IQ than your parents, do you think your friend has a higher chance in being smarter than you? Yeah. Well, I believe it's definitely true. <laughs> <laughs> because as you can see, from all the kids from the elite schools, all their parents are smart. La. Whereas, those parents who are not as smart, their kids end up in the loudest school. Okay, what about you? I, I agree with Darren. Yeah, he, what he says is very true. <laughs> yep. Yes. Because like I feel like smart is is more of nature than nurture. Yeah. Do you think intelligent parents produce intelligent children? Alicia, what do you think? What do you think? I think yes. Intelligent parents will produce more intelligent children. Because being uh, intelligent in the sense that maybe they may be educated. So they will want their children to receive the same level of education. So I think they will prioritize like studies and academics more. And you dedicate the necessary resources for the kids to emulate them, maybe. Yeah. I think I think intelligent parents produce intelligent children because they'll tend to prioritize education because they know how important education is. So like when you prioritize education, your children will ultimately Better, I guess. Do you think it's anything to do with genes? Yeah, I think it's something to do with genes. For me, I'll say yes because I think it's all in the genes. Like, gen geniuses are born, not me. That's what I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, nah, I was going to say that same thing. <laughs> I legit was going to say that now let's recap what we found out during our research. Just like what many of our friends thought, intelligence is affected by three factors. Our genes, our attitude and our environment. The study is called Childhood Intelligence is Heritable, Highly Polygenic and Associated with FMBP1L, which is the gene primarily associated with intelligence. This study was conducted by Bevan Benyami from the University of Queensland. The aim of this study is to identify associated genetic variants and estimate their contribution to the variation in childhood intelligence. This study was conducted by using five methods of analysis. The first analysis is meta-analysis, which is the combination of studies. The second is gene-based analysis, which is to examine the relation of FMBP1L with intelligence. This gene is highly polygenic and heritable. The third is GCTA analysis, which is a mixed framework which fits all genotype SMPs simultaneously. One of the reasons for this analysis is to eliminate bias due to common environmental factors. From the data, we found out that heritability value is 0.41 for childhood intelligence. If there is such a high correlation, why do some kids with intelligent parents turn out to just have normal intelligence? So now we will examine other factors, such as attitudes. The name of the study is Improving Fluid Intelligence with Training on Working Memory. It's conducted by Jagi and her colleagues from the University of Michigan and U University of Bern. The aim of the experiment is to investigate the effects of training intervention on intelligence. They split the participants into two groups, the control group with 35 participants and the experimental group with 34 participants. For the experimental group, they have a training also known as the dual and back task. Dual because there is a visual and an auditory component. Participants simultaneously see the images and hear the letters which changes every 500 milliseconds. Every time something matches two items ago, the participants have to press a button. Participants train from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for 25 minutes a day. Within a control group and experimental group, they were split into four groups. The first group were trained for 8 days, second group 12 days, third group 17, fourth group 19. 
a day after the end of each training session, participants from the control group and experimental group take an IQ test. So what are the results? Comparing the IQ test of all participants before and after the training, the results show that participants who went for the training improved significantly more than the participants who did not go for the training. Moreover, participants who train for more days have better results. From 8, 12, 17, 19 days, the results of the IQ test significantly improved. Hence, the more the training, the higher the intelligence showing the importance of our attitude and how much we are willing to train to improve ourselves. And that's for attitude. Now let's now think about environmental factors. The aim was to find out the effect of social order on intelligence. Social order is above order with the DC siblings disregarded. More deeply, they wanted to find out whether social interaction theory was true or gestational theory was true. Social interaction theory explains that elder siblings receive more favorable intellectual family environments and thus thrive intellectually. Gestational theory suggests that the prenatal environment becomes less conducive for intellectual formation as birth order increases. Here are the data they took and these were from Norwegian conscripts. Take a child born in 201 stake 6. Studies show that his IQ is on average 103. In 2017, his younger brother is born, birth order 2, social order 2, and on average the IQ would be lower at 100. However, if the elder sibling passed away, the younger sibling with birth order 2 and now social order 1 now would on average have an IQ of 103 instead of 100. It was as if the elder sibling didn't exist. Let's look at other examples. It is a myth that genes are determinative of intelligence. Intelligence is affected by genes, environment and the interaction between genes and environment. Attitude and effort plays a part too. One should adopt a growth mindset and seek out challenging opportunities to improve his or her intelligence. Thank you!